As most of you might know, I was never really a big fan of the original Xbox One. That system was really big, it was clunky, and even though it was a video game system, it was not really trying to be one all the way through. It was doing a billion different tasks, and it really wasn't the master of any one thing. When the Xbox One S came out though, I found that this system was a big improvement. Its gaming focus was a lot more pronounced, and well, it just looked better as a system, and it performed better as a system. But then I kept thinking about the next iteration. What would Microsoft do to make the Xbox One S design even better? And folks, we're here. Microsoft just sent us in their brand new Xbox One X Scorpio edition. Let's take a look. The Xbox One X looks very much like the Xbox One S, the previous system that Microsoft released. And personally, I like that. I really like the system's design and the way it looked. And for everything aesthetically on the Xbox One X, well, we're pretty much looking at the exact same system, but just a little smaller. The version of the console that Microsoft sent us is the Scorpio Edition. And the only real difference with the Scorpio Edition compared to a regular Xbox One X is that, well, there's a little bit of a gradient design and it says Project Scorpio right to the left there. It's the same size, as a normal Xbox One X and it has the same internal components as an Xbox One X. Usually when a system is a lot more powerful, they make the system a lot bigger to fit in all those components, but somehow they're able to fit everything into a much smaller package, which is pretty insane. Here's the part of the video where I regurgitate a bunch of numbers at you so that you can know how much faster this system is compared to the last one. Well, I'm not going to do that. All you need to know is that this is the most powerful Xbox that Microsoft has ever released. And yes, it is a big improvement over the original Xbox One and Xbox One S. And that's kind of all you really need to know. But if you need to see a graph to explain that, well, here's one. See, the Xbox One X is riding a vehicle. That means it's faster. Look, folks, at the end of the day, the specs do matter for a lot of people, but for us gamers, all we really need to know is that this system is quite possibly the most powerful video game console anyone has ever released to this point. So it's gonna be pretty crazy. Not only is the Xbox One X capable of outputting 4K gaming at 60 frames per second on your TV, but it's also capable of recording 30 second batches of gameplay at any point from the built-in options on the system. However, we wanted to take a step back and let the system run the best it could without taxing the hardware by making it perform additional tasks. We reached out to Epiphan Video and they gave us a solution called the AV.io 4K, which is a USB video capture card that's capable of capturing 4K at 30 frames per second. The majority of this video was captured with the AV.io 4K, but once in a while we'll showcase the internal recording abilities of the system, and when that happens, the footage will be marked at the bottom of the screen. The quality of this capture card looks fantastic, and it really captures all the details that you can see with the Xbox One X at 4K. The only negative we had with this capture card was that it only captures 4K at 30 frames per second. Lower resolutions will go at higher frame rates, but unfortunately for the resolution we were capturing, we were simply limited to 30 frames per second. But because of the really positive experience I had with this card, I would recommend anyone that wants to get an Xbox One X and stream it using their PC to get this card to get that 4K resolution. We were given a whole bunch of Xbox One X enhanced games to try out on the brand new system, because realistically you really want to test out enhanced games since those are the games that are going to have the most benefit on the Xbox One X. So the very first game we looked at was Disneyland Adventures. <laughs> You remember that game? I mean, I am shocked that this is one of the games that got a 4K Ultra HD and HDR upgrade, but here we go. Now to be fair, Disneyland Adventures is kind of an interesting game if you're into Kinect. I never really was, but this game is good for kids. However, I don't know how many people out there are rushing to get an Xbox One X to play Disneyland Adventures. But hey, if that game doesn't work for you, why not rush a Disney Pixar adventure? Which is exactly like Disneyland Adventures. It's another Kinect game which also has regular Xbox One controls, but you're basically looking at two Runathon games, which I'm not really a big fan of. However, I will say this in Rush, a Disney Pixar adventure, there's a really good level from Finding Dory that just has a really nice scenic look. Lots of nice rich colors and honestly in HDR and 4K this level looked really nice. But unfortunately I know a lot of you out there aren't going to care about these two games so let's get into something that I think people would be a lot more interested in. Zoo Tycoon Ultimate Animal Collection. Ah uh, yeah this also has a 4K Ultra HD and HDR upgrade and sure it 
kind of looks nicer. But again, we need to look at something that people are legitimately interested in. And personally for me, I've always wanted to see a really cool platformer on the Xbox platform. So here's Super Lucky's Tale. This isn't really the greatest game in the world, but it's a good one that kind of services as a great way to see what the Xbox One X is capable of. Now the footage you're seeing here is the game running on the Xbox One S, which will give you the exact same experience as if you're running it on an Xbox One original. But what we're gonna do here is show you the difference between the original game running on that platform and on the right side, Xbox One X at 4K. And as you can see, there's actually a little bit of a difference when it comes to the clarity of the image. But one of the interesting things about the Xbox One X is that it's also capable of super sampling this exact same image on a lower resolution screen. So if you don't have a 4K screen in your house and you do have an Xbox One X and a copy of Super Lucky's Tale, you'll get this super sampled image on a regular 1080p screen, which I think looks really nice. It looks a lot better than the original Xbox One S, but here's the big deal. This game runs at 60 frames per second on the Xbox One X and runs at 30 frames per second on the original Xbox One and Xbox One S. This is one of the reasons I like the Xbox One X. We're able to get higher frame rates on Xbox enhanced games that I think just look a lot better that way. A consistent frame rate and a higher frame rate are always more important to me as a gamer, but if you can also have that 4K resolution and 60 frames per second like you get with Super Lucky's Tale, well, you get both and it works quite well. Next up is Killer Instinct. Now this game runs at 4K at 60 frames per second, very much like Super Lucky's Tale, and this is a great example of what you can get with the Xbox One enhanced updates coming through on the system. No doubt you're impressed by my awful Killer Instinct gameplay, but that aside, the game looks a lot better than it does on the original Xbox One. This right here is a great example of what the Xbox One X is capable of. So here's Gears of War 4. Now what I really like about this game is that the developers have given us the choice between two different modes, visual or performance. Now visual gives you a whole bunch of added visual effects and a 4K resolution and that kind of stuff, but performance gets the game running at 60 frames per second. That increased resolution with better visuals is nice and all, but I always prefer a higher frame rate. This was the very first game on the Xbox One X that I played that gave me the choice between the two options. And it was kind of nice to see the option there, but I really wish they would have found some way to kind of get both to work at the same time. Regardless though, whenever that higher frame rate option is there, I always take it. Now these next two games are actually Xbox 360 games that have been enhanced with the Xbox One X. Halo 3 and Fallout 3. All that the Xbox One X is doing right now is running the game exactly as you would have seen it on the original Xbox One and Xbox One S. The difference though is that it's being rendered at a higher resolution than what they were capable of on the original 360, and they're even more higher than the original Xbox One. Because of this, some of the textures in the game will look like they're much higher quality, and you'll also have much sharper edges around the corners of objects and stuff. But realistically, they didn't do anything different here to make this game look a lot better beyond just upgrading the resolution, which is kind of nice. They would be able to do this on a whole bunch of Xbox 360 games and saving a whole bunch of money by not going back and remastering everything. If all they have to do is apply a minor patch to older games to make them look this good, well suddenly Microsoft is sitting on a gold mine of 360 games and original Xbox games that will look better on this platform than any other. That's pretty cool. Halo 5 on the Xbox One X looks and plays just like the original, only this time around, the game is looking a lot sharper. This increased resolution at 4K really does make a difference when you're playing the game. And while the frame rate relatively stays the same, and it was already a pretty good frame rate at that, the game manages to hold a much higher resolution the entire time the game is being played. Originally when I played this game on Xbox One, it had a dynamic scaling resolution, which meant that while you were playing the game in too many things were happening on the screen, the game would knock down the resolution in order to maintain the higher frame rate. But now, the frame rate seems to be as high as it possibly can be, and I really like this. On the Xbox One X, all the in-game rendered cutscenes are rendered at a much higher resolution, and that higher resolution gives you far more crisper details and a lot sharper edges. And this is really noticeable when you start to see a lot of things on the screen at once. This entire game is made a lot better by having it on the Xbox One X. If you're a fan of Halo 5, this is simply the best way to play it now. 
I've been waiting for the Assassin's Creed franchise to go to Egypt for a really long time. It was one of my top location picks for that entire series. And with Assassin's Creed Origins, we're finally going there. This is without a doubt the best looking Assassin's Creed game ever made, and it really stands out. Visually, you've got a lot of really good textures, model work, and a whole bunch of wonderful scenery to just stare at for hours and hours. And from my experience so far with the game, it's been a true return to form for the series and gameplay as well. But with this game, we did something special. Ubisoft sent us two copies of the game, one on the Xbox One X and the other for the PlayStation 4 Pro. So we were capable of taking a look at both games side by side. And while not every single scene exactly lines up because, well, it is a little bit of a random gameplay experience, we were hard pressed to find any real visual differences between the two versions. This is a really interesting thing because the Xbox One X is technically a far more superior system to the PlayStation 4 Pro. But believe it or not, I consider this a good thing. See, technically, we should be seeing games coming out on the Xbox One X that are a little bit underperforming, but instead, we're seeing games that are at parity with a system that has been out for a very long time. This tells me that developers are already capable of making an experience at 4K on a brand new system quite easily, and I believe as time goes on, you're going to see a greater separation between the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X releases of games, because eventually, when developers really tap into this thing and are capable of actually utilizing that power, you're probably going to see games that are really going to blow you away. Forza Motorsport 7 is arguably the best looking experience you're going to find on the Xbox One X. Not only are you getting 4K and HDR and all that fun stuff, but you're also getting 60 frames per second gameplay. And the game just seems to load a little bit faster too in certain instances. While you still do have the longer loading times that are kind of normal for Forza Motorsport at this point, you definitely have a much better experience here. The race tracks, the cars, the lighting, the weather effects, everything looks great on this game. And it looks even better when you're playing it on Xbox One X. One thing I noticed immediately while playing this game in 4K was that all the models seem to have much sharper and refined edges because of the increased resolution. And taking into consideration that in this game you're primarily looking at cars, yeah, it's important. Rise of the Tomb Raider is another game that looks a lot better playing on this system. There's moments when you're looking at Laura's face that she almost looks so realistic that you could almost swear that it was an actual actress that they were filming. And again, just like Assassin's Creed Origins, if you want to be playing this game on a console at the best quality you can possibly get, the Xbox One X is where it's at. But interestingly enough, for this game specifically, it looks a lot better running on the Xbox One X than it does on my PC. And that just blew me away. But the experience is not perfect for every single game. Quantum Break is an example where I really didn't notice much of an improvement. Honestly, I wish I could tell you that there was some really big change between the Xbox One Enhanced version and the original, but aside from a slightly just more stable frame rate, the game looks the same and basically plays the same. You don't have an enhanced frame rate to 60 frames per second, and the resolution didn't go to 4K. And although the original frame rate seems to be a little bit more stable now, that's really all they did here. The benefits of the Xbox One X come from two things, the quality of your TV and the games you play. Because not every single TV is going to get the benefits of the system, and not every game you're going to play is going to make use of the Xbox One X hardware. I was playing the console on a 50 inch 4K TV about 10 feet away from me, and in that setup I couldn't see any improvements from my couch. I had to get a little bit closer to the screen to see any difference. So if your television is larger than 50 inches, well, you may have an easier time seeing all the beautiful detail from the comfort of your couch at about 10 feet. Another factor in your experience with the Xbox One X is whether your television supports high dynamic range or if it doesn't. Now some original 4K TVs that were sold out to people actually didn't have HDR support, and that's kind of sad. HDR support is really important, I feel, for the 4K experience because it just makes all the images on your TV look a lot better. But HDR isn't just limited to the Xbox One X. The Xbox One S also has HDR support, and it works on a lot of games. And I've also used that on the Xbox One S on my 4K TV, and it really does make a marked improvement over games when you're playing them. I've run a number of blind tests with myself and friends to see if we could tell the difference between HDR images and regular high definition and 4K images. And in almost every instance, people are able to tell which one is the higher quality image. So if you're thinking about getting a new TV, make sure that you get one that has HDR support built in. 
The best experiences you're going to have on the Xbox One X are games that are tailored to take advantage of the hardware. There's going to be plenty of games out there that will never get patched, and if they don't, you might see improvements here and there, but the really big ones, the ones that matter, are going to be the Xbox One X enhanced titles. Every single Xbox game ever released has the ability to be patched to make use of Xbox One enhanced features. And yes, I'm even including original Xbox games and 360 games, because as long as they can be patched to make use of this new hardware like we've seen with Halo 3 and Fallout 3, well, the games can just run and look a lot better than they've ever had in the past. We're already seeing a back catalog of Xbox One games get patched to make use of the Xbox One X hardware, and they don't all offer upgrades across the board. Some of them just offer 4K resolutions and some of them offer higher frame rates, but regardless, they're really nice enhancements to see. So if you've made it this far into the review, there's probably one question on your mind right now. Should I buy an Xbox One X? Now there's two factors. One, if you own a 4K TV and you have an HDR TV as well, yes, you gotta get yourself an Xbox One X. The performance increase is amazing, and the high resolution games actually matter quite a bit, especially if you're into those larger resolutions. And I imagine if you got a 4K TV, this may have been one of the reasons why you did that in the first place. Your investment in this console will be very well worth it. But the second factor is, well, what if you don't own a 4K TV and you only own a 1080p screen or perhaps another screen at some other resolution? Well, with this console, because of how much more power it's got in it, some of the games just tend to run better. You get more stable frame rates, better resolutions, and in honestly most cases, the games are just better performing on this console. So yeah, even if you have one of those TVs, it's worth getting. At the end of the day, if you don't own an Xbox One right now, don't get the original, don't get the Xbox One S, get the Xbox One X. It really is that much better of a system. You're going to see performances across the board regardless of your resolution of screen. And even though it is a little bit more expensive, I personally think it's a worthwhile investment. But hey, that's only my thing. If you don't really care about those higher frame rates and those bigger resolutions, well, this probably isn't the system for you. For everyone else out there, and for the hardcore gamers in mind, you probably want to get an Xbox One X.